Servers in Space. This is another uh, topic from Jordan. <laughs> NVIDIA sent the H100 GPU into space on board the StarCloud 1 satellite on Sunday to test how data centers could work in orbit. Terrestrial mm. data centers require massive amounts of electricity and water. And StarCloud 1 is the first step of a plan from Redmond, Washington-based startup StarCloud to move resource-hungry data-crunching infrastructure into space, hopefully to reduce the environmental impact. Ah, yes. Ah, let's, yes. Let's fire off the rockets to reduce the environmental impact. <laughs> yes, and don't forget... Very good. Don't forget, very clutter good. up low Earth orbit. Yeah, we need ah, that. Ah, yes. Very, very good, yes. Mm. During the satellite's three-year mission... NVIDIA will be testing a range of AI use cases, including analyzing images of the Earth and running an LLM by Google. <laughs> Not to be outdone, Google announced Suncatcher, aiming to use solar power to run super-efficient AI infrastructure. The I mean, cool. The project plans to launch two prototype satellites by early 2027. Oh. This all comes after Amazon founder Jeff Bezos predicted gigawatt-scale data centers would be built in space within the next 10 to 20 years, where the continuously available solar energy will see them eventually outperform terrestrial data centers. Bezos says space-based infrastructure is the next step of using space to improve life on Earth. <laughs> you look so mad. It's great. In other space news... Spews? Semiconductor startup Bexar has signed a launch agreement with SpaceX to integrate the company's experimental fab ship payloads into 12 upcoming launches. The fab ships will not enter orbit. They will remain attached to the booster and return to Earth within about 10 minutes of launch. During each mission, the fab ships will conduct tests to evaluate the feasibility of space-based chip this fabrication. Stuff, this stuff is crazy. Including whether semiconductor materials can withstand the journey to space and the subsequent re-entry. Yeah, that stuff's nuts. But why, though? Uh, I don't remember. Is I, it I've, to avoid, I've, like, movement of the Earth? I, I honestly... I honestly don't remember. I, oh, it's been so long since I've read about this, but this is, like, a thing. It's, it's, uh, it's an oxygen-free environment. A lot, of, a lot of fabrication is done under vacuum. That's something. Yeah, but we can create... Cat OS yeah, says, yeah. I think it was to do with clean room, but like, yeah, but there's so much radiation out there. So you're going to have, what, you're going to have this like shielded orbiting fab thing? How about when you need to perform maintenance on it? Like, have we, have we gone micro mad? Microgravity. That's it. It's micro, it's microgravity. Oh. It's not the vacuum. Uh, it allows you yeah. to create perfect spheres more easily. Microgravity. Which makes a ton of sense. Long I, I, because I, I'm remembering that's why they uh, that's why they're doing drug research in space as well. A lot of it's microgravity. A lot of our research for like making things on Earth always has to deal with gravity, right? Mm. So it, when you take gravity out of the equation, some things change. Uh, in some cases, for the better when trying to make certain things. Got it. Long Linus says companies will do anything to not bring tech uh, bring chip production to the West. <laughs> <laughs> literally put it in space <laughs> dude imagine the cost imagine the cost imagine how many they're going to be able to make in the in that amount of time <laughs> imagine the cost of each one of those chips <laughs> oh man it would be cooler it would be cooler if it was like moon base or something uh yeah, you're still gonna maybe you're, maybe they're just doing research for now, and then it becomes moon base or something later. But yeah, 